good morning, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. Thank you guys so much for all the support on the Miata video. I really appreciate it. I was not expecting to get over 14,000 views on my first ever YouTube video on this channel. So thank you guys, I really appreciate it. And I'm keeping the content going. Uh, so today, without further ado, I figured I'd introduce you guys to the car that I've been building alongside the Miata for a while now, my 1989 Spirit Ray Nissan 240SX. Before we start off this video, I just want to give you guys a heads up. There is another YouTuber doing some sort of car review out in the distance. So if you see an AMG flyby, that is him. Anyways, getting right into it. This is a Spirit Ray Mayabi kit out of Japan. I would say that it's authentic and preface that, but I don't even have to because there, I don't think to my knowledge are any replicas of this kit. This is a very unique kit, a very unique style that I picked out for this car and it fits the 240SX or the 180SX depending on where you are in the world and it is for the hatch uh, version not the coupe so yeah not your average s13 kit there's obviously a lot of other kits that people go with this one's not usually on the top of the roster for a lot of people but for me i really enjoyed the look of the kit the body lines look really good i like the rear quarters and so we'll go into all of those details but just to give you guys a brief overview of the kit before we go all the way into it it comes with a front bumper two front fenders two side skirts two rear quarters and then the Spirit Ray rear bumper. Some of you guys may recognize this bumper from Adam LZ. Uh, Adam LZ switched to the Spirit Ray bumper on the Cream S13 a little bit ago. His S13 is a big inspiration for me. Uh, his channel in general is a big inspiration. I've been growing up watching him on YouTube. He wasn't the reason that I did the kit. I was already planning on doing the kit. It was just kind of a cool coincidence that somebody I look up to also picked the same rear bumper as me. And then obviously this is heavily Adam LZ inspired the 326 power wing but yeah so going into the kit i will pop up the specs um, because i can't remember off the top of my head but we've got wide body front fenders and then wide body rear quarters so as you can see this is not your typical wide body there's no hardware right and so you're probably wondering how is there no hardware where's the hardware at why is it not a bolt-on wide body like the miata wide body and that is a great question so before we get into the process of what it takes to mold on these rear quarters that's what it's called is molding i figured i'd give you guys a little bit of backstory on this car every car that i have comes with a story obviously and this car has a great story this car did not look like this when i bought it this car started off life as a automatic single cam gray s13 hatch so not that impressive right i'll pop up a ton of photos obviously of when i first got the car when it came to my possession uh, it had clear coat failure everywhere one of the rear quarters had some damage that was fixable but i decided to go wide body instead since it already had a little bit of cosmetic damage so super low power it didn't look good it just was in rough shape overall i bought it from my friend caden i got this car for about 3500 bucks if i remember correctly and that was in like the top of the market and the reason why i got this car was the underneath of it was stupid clean way cleaner than i've ever seen i had a 240 before this but it was rusty as hell uh, it sucked to work on and it was just not a good experience if you're gonna own a 240 and jump into projects like these I really encourage you guys to go and find a really good shell and sometimes getting a good shell requires that you get some of the stuff that you don't want such as an automatic and a single cam ka you know that's just kind of the name of the game with these cars at this point they're so popular now that if you're gonna get one you're gonna have to sacrifice some of the nice things to have in order to have the essentials so that's why i'd recommend that's what i did find an automatic one they're less beat up and uh, they'll probably have less rust as well because they're just driven as commuter cars so obviously this car did not look like this when i got it as i said uh, this had a lot of work done and i can't take all the credit for this full disclosure i did not have the time to be able to paint this car and so i had my buddy dylan at toy sport automotive he did all the prep work and molded the fenders and painted the car. Now the car's color is kind of basic, but also kind of unique to me, it is my first car's color. So for some of you that know me personally, you know that my first ever car was a 2013 Ford Focus and it came in Oxford white. And so what I decided to do to pay homage to that, cause that car has always been good to me, is I painted this car in Oxford white as well. And two reasons for that. One, obviously I want to pay homage to my first car, but also it's a 240. So if anything breaks, if anything gets scuffed, if anything, you know, hopefully not but if my bumper was to explode right because it's made out of fiberglass this whole kit's made out of fiberglass i can repaint it 
pretty easy. So that is another reason I did that is to keep costs down so I can still enjoy the car, drive the car and not freak out if something gets messed up because it's not a custom color that has to be matched perfectly. It's just Oxford white and it looks good. It looks better in my opinion than the Nissan OEM white. So you guys can fight me on that in the comments, but, but I feel like this was the right choice for me. Uh, it was what I could handle. And yeah, it just ma it made sense at the time to paint it this color. Now, wraps exist. I could always wrap it a crazy color if I want to down the road. Maybe we will, we'll see. But yeah, so Dylan went in, he prepped this whole car. I filmed him prepping a lot of it, pulling out some dents in the hood, just doing all of the hard work that is required to get this outcome for a car. I wish I could say that I did it all myself and learned it all myself, but honestly, it's not possible with me working full time to be able to prep and paint a car without having the facilities to do so. I don't have a shop, I don't have a paint booth, obviously, and all that stuff. So that's why I went with Dylan. So Dylan molded these quarters perfectly. So as you can see, it blends in perfect to the OEM lines and you can't even see it. And so that process, it's pretty crazy. He cuts the quarter panel back slightly and then puts some rivets on it and then puts some adhesive and basically just molds it onto the cut fender. So under this, it has cut fenders. I have photos of that as well. They're cut very high. I learned from the Miata not to cut short. And so this doesn't have any rubbing issues. And along with that, bringing me to the next thing is the wheels and tires. We'll go more in depth on the wheels and tires later in this video, but I just wanted to get this out of the way. This setup doesn't rub at all. So just letting you guys know, if you want to run this setup and you have a Spirit Ray 240 and the off chance that you do, you can run the setup and you can have the fitment I have um, with no issues. So just want to get that out of the way. But there is some small stuff that I did learn after ordering the wheels and fitting them and all that stuff that I'll touch on later in this video. So next thing on the list is the headlights. So I will show you guys those right now. They are very similar to the setup I have on the Miata. I fell in love with the Octane lighting system on the Miata and figured I would do the same thing for the 240. Um, as you can see, it doesn't look too aftermarket. Again, just cleans up that look and I like it. I think it's a good balance of aftermarket, but still looks slightly OEM. So that's why I went with was the Octane lighting again with the LED upgrade. They're very nice. You can see very well at night. Um, and yeah, have no complaints on those. So now that we covered the headlights, I figured we'd walk over to the rear of the car because this car actually has aftermarket rear taillights, unlike the Miata. And so this has Type X taillights from Nissan. I got these from nissanparts.cc, which is their URL, but they sell really nice OEM parts straight from Nissan that you can get in the US. And I think this is a good set to switch up your taillights on your 240. And they look really nice. I didn't do the bulb upgrade yet. I might do that down the road because I have some plans to do some extra aero along with some different lighting and stuff like that down the road. Um, but there is a whole nother spec I want to do with this. I don't like doing like stages necessarily, um, but that's kind of the idea is to do something where when this thing has more power, I'm going to switch up the arrow a little bit. But moving from that, we're going to take a look at the hardware that's holding this kit on, which is just Downstar hardware. So um, same thing as the Miata. Uh, I just have some Downstar low profile hardware um, holding on the side skirts and then on the inside of the door there's also some more hardware holding on the side skirts as well um, but that's about it i need to fully mount these side skirts right now they're not fully mounted there's still a little bit of a gap that i'm not happy with so the reason i haven't installed these fully yet with like uh, mounting tape and all that is because the car is still a work in progress i'm still taking it on and off jack stands i'm still doing modifications to it so when i feel like the car is not going to be worked on for quite a while then i will fully mount these but this side's even worse definitely not happy about it it's definitely not going to stay like that just wanted to get that out of the way because that is one thing that i know looks janky right now and i'm not happy with so i would like to get that pressed all the way up with some mounting tape eventually but yeah just downstar hardware on this car i love their hardware it works really well it looks really nice and yeah not too much hardware to keep all this kit on most of it is just using the oem mounting points so this just for you guys' information i'm using the rear factory uh, i don't know what you'd call it bash bar bumper support whatever you want to call it you want to keep your oem rear one when you do the spirit ray uh, rear bumper because otherwise it'll sag if you do a bash bar so that's one thing if you guys want to run this rear bumper i would highly encourage you not to run anything but oem for the bumper support because then you're gonna have fitment issues whereas mine fits super well no sagging um, and looks great i love it and since we're back here i figured we would address the exhaust so this is where i have to reveal the big secret so this is an apexi n1 exhaust but this car still has the single cam k in it i know 
I know it's terrible I'm not a fan of it either um, but here's the deal I have an SR for this car I am building it I'm waiting on parts and it's gonna take a little while so you guys got to be patient but yeah this has the single cam K in it still so um, I'll pop up some clips of the exhaust it sounds kind of like a Subaru from what I've been told from the outside and so I'll get some clips of it so you guys can hear it because it is kind of a weird setup having an Apexi N1 exhaust on a single cam K doesn't really make sense but is what it is so I'll get some clips of it uh, maybe do some flybys as well for you guys so you guys can hear it but it does sound a little bit goofy and uh, yeah just wanted to let you guys know but the exhaust itself I really like I like the look of it the craftsmanship is really good um, I'll pop up some photos of when I did install it because the factory exhaust was wasted but I will say that the mounting of this is a little bit low for my liking that's more due to my bumper than it is to the actual exhaust so I need to have the hangers modified so that the exhaust goes up and to the left a little bit as you can see it's a little bit too far down for my liking um, I like my exhaust fitment to be right so eventually once we do the engine swap and that stuff the exhaust will get fabricated as well to make that fit more proper so yeah that's just one of my gripes with it but overall great exhaust and it's pretty quiet and uh, pretty respectful sound so that's basically everything on the exterior I figured I'd just touch on a few other small things these are called piston lights these are the OEM ones from Nissan with LEDs actually in them so the front is full LED from the headlight and the piston light I figured I'd let you guys know that's what those are called because I had a hard time finding them as this is the first Nissan I've ever owned and um, I didn't know what some of the parts were called. So hopefully that'll help you guys a little bit. Also, I just wanted to point out these vents are really cool. I didn't really touch on them when I was going over the, uh, the kit, but I think they're really neat. Um, in Japan, some guys put the RX-8 blinkers because it has to pass tech. And so in the UK and in Japan, they do these like side markers from an RX-8, which is kind of unique. I think it's kind of cool. I don't think I'll ever do it, but yeah, just wanted to show you guys. So now that we've talked about all of the exterior stuff, I figured we'd hop into the interior and talk about that and that's where my next deep dark secret gets revealed no god please no 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 yeah this is it this is uh this is what i've been hiding good old nissan automatic transmission with overdrive very uh very shitty not gonna lie uh it's not fun I, I don't enjoy it. I have a manual transfer in SR20, and I have the SR20, like I said. So this will be eventually fixed. But yeah, for right now, you're gonna have to love it. You're gonna either have to love it or hate it. You can hate this car because it's an automatic, but I have a manual for it. So it will be cool eventually, you know, but for right now, this is what we got. So I hope you guys still accept this car for what it is. Because if it means anything, you know, it has an automatic trans, but it has a uncracked dash. You know, it could be worse. It could have a crack dash and an automatic, but I swapped the dash. It used to have a crack dash, but uh, yeah. So uh, going on to the interior, this is a Nardi steering wheel. I forget the size, but I'll pop it up for you guys. I like it. It's a little bit big and it's perforated, but I enjoy it. I've always dreamt of having a Nardi steering wheel with a quick release. Uh, it has the never content collab works bell quick release. So actually, just so you guys can see it, it's really hot. So I might have to set this down, hold on. All right, there we go. This is how it works. It's quick release, comes off. But yeah, this is from Austin at Never Content. Really cool brand if you guys ever want some stuff. He does really cool collabs and his shirts are cool. I really enjoy his stuff. I really respect his cars. It's something I've always looked up to. And um, yeah, I always support when he, uh, he drops clothing. So to put this back on, you simply go like this, press, and then boom, it is back on the car. 1989 240s didn't come with an airbag, so swapping this out is really no impact on safety. Uh, regardless, you're gonna have a steering wheel in your face, so there is no airbag whether you swap it or not. So yeah, I chose to swap it. Um, along with that, I still need to get some of these interior panels fixed. This car is still very much a project. I'm obviously missing some stuff that will get revamped and redone um, when I do the swap and all of that. But yeah, so going on to the next thing, <laughs> that is a pretty big deal is the integrated cage so this is a welded in cage with two bolts on the back so it's kind of a hybrid so it's bolted in into the into the strut towers and then into the floor of the car with some crazy hardware and then it has your you know your harness bar attachment and all that stuff but it is technically a bolt-in cage because of those two bolts at the top but this allows me to run full interior so as you guys can see, I'm able to run all the way through 
the car without having uh, any interior panels missing, which was really important to me. I really wanted to have something that looked really clean on the inside, um, but was still aggressive and still had a cool like street fighter look to it. So that's why I opted for the cage that could accept a full interior. This is a custom cage done by Dylan. Dylan did a great job with this. His fabrication work is crazy. And then the one thing I want to do to clean it up is I'm going to get some gasket material and put some gasket material around those holes where the cage goes into the frame and that way it'll look a little bit more finished. But yeah, so the rest of the interior, the back seats are dyed black. The front seats are S14 seats that have also been dyed black. The carpet is just black carpet. I forget what website I got it from, but yeah, that is just black carpet, not dyed. And yeah, just got a really nice black theme going on in here. I think I might do some red seats eventually. I think that would look really good. Let me guys know what you think in the comments. For right now, the S14 seats are fine, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the, the setup at the moment. And also my speedometer is not functioning properly at the moment. It uh, stays at like 90 miles per hour and then just drops down to like 100 and whatever. So now that we got the interior out of the way, I figured we would go to the back of the car, the back hatch. This wing looks absolutely massive when the hatch is popped. It's kind of funny. So I'll show you guys right here. Whoop. Very big. But uh, yeah, so in here I have some of my camera gear, so ignore that. But I have an air compressor back here. And you guys are probably wondering, this car's not on air. Why do you have a compressor? Well, that, my friends, is another little secret about this car that I did. This car is on air cup suspension. So if you guys don't know what that is, I will give you guys a demonstration right now. So walking over to the front of the car again, into the interior, I've got this little switch. I don't have it properly mounted up yet with its own button and everything, but just to show you guys, you see that? Let me uh, let me set you guys down real quick, and I'll uh, show it one more time. So that is air cup suspension from Fortune Auto. So this car is on Fortune Auto coilovers, but with air cups in the front. So the rear acts as just a normal coilover. The front acts as a normal coilover as well, but just has an air cup on it. So I had these sourced from Fortune Auto. They have Swiss springs on them. I forget the exact uh, specs. I believe it's the same as the Miata. I think it's 14 in the front and 12 in the rear, if I remember correctly. So pretty aggressive, but for the most part, not too bad of a ride quality. The big meaty tires actually help a lot with that. Uh, but yeah, I thought that's kind of cool. So I figured I'd show you guys. Yeah, I have a Fortune Auto cup system on this car. And the reason for that is because getting out of my driveway, the Miata, since it's a shorter wheelbase, is pretty easy to finagle out of the driveway. You gotta go at a pretty harsh angle but with the 240 you also need to go at an angle but the front bumper sticks out so much that i never want to hit this thing and so what i ended up doing was the cup suspension so i can raise the car a little bit and it helps just ensure that i don't smack the front of my bumper or any of the control arms or any of the other upgrade stuff i've done in the past so that brings me to my next thing i have some b-roll from in the past of the suspension install where life got pretty hectic. I, it was gonna be one of my first YouTube videos to be honest with you, but I'll show you guys some of that footage right now. Basically what I did is I installed Nismo control arms on the front and I have some for the rear that haven't been installed yet, the lower control arms. And then I did ISR for the sway bar and all the supporting arms. I did GK Tech for the steering components and then did like a Nismo power brace and a few other small things. But yeah, just stiffened up the car a little bit, replaced some of the shot old suspension on it while I was doing the coilovers. It turned out pretty nice. I like it a lot. It's going to give me that adjustment that I need down the road once the engine swap's done and I'm running a lot more power, you know, with this car I want it to be set up correctly and have all the adjustments that I would need to do that. One other thing on the interior that I forgot about is this privacy cover. So I recently sourced this off of eBay. My friend Jacob and I went out in the backyard and we shaved it down a little bit and then dyed it black to match the rest of the interior. It was originally brown and then it's got these little loops that go to the little connectors up there. But I always want a privacy cover. I don't know why. It's just one of those silly weird things where I'm like, this has to happen. I need this. And so I ended up finding one and, uh, and getting one. So I don't know if you guys like this. Let me know what you guys think if I should run it without or with it. I prefer to run it with it but if you think I should run it without and flex the uh, air piston lift system then uh, let me know I'm, I'm curious to know what you guys think maybe in the next show I go to I will uh, leave it off so people can admire that all right and now for the very disappointing but uh, kind of exciting part of the video I guess I don't know depends on uh, if you guys want to make fun of me or not we'll see but uh, this is the single cam ka situation that is going on let me use my head to prop up this hood and there we go not impressive but this at least allows you to see my fortunato um 
cup suspension right here and so kind of see how I ran it. So there's little air lines that go into the shock towers and then go back into this T that goes all the way to the back of the car where the compressor is. But yeah, this is the single cam in all of its glory. I'm honestly not gonna do any maintenance to this thing because again, I have the SR swap coming. There's no point in doing anything to this motor. I'm just gonna keep running it until I'm ready to swap the car. It's just gonna get swapped and then this motor will go to some other car enthusiast in the valley that wants it. I've already got multiple people DMing me wanting to buy it once I'm done with it. I'm excited to see this motor live on in somebody else's hands, but for me, it's not what I wanted. I truly want this car to be kind of a Japanese spec 240 even though it is left-hand drive and all that I want to do all the cool stuff I see in the magazines and online of uh, the SR swaps and all the cool noises and all that stuff It just I love the JDM stuff and the single cam K is just not gonna scratch that JDM itch that I have and so uh, Yeah, that's why I'll be swapping this car eventually and then probably painting this engine bay as well It's gray. It doesn't look that nice and it could use a cleanup. So yeah, eventually this whole thing will be transformed but for right now this is our starting point. So you guys get to join me on the journey of uh, making this a fun, fast car. And so while we have the engine out right here, I figured I'd talk about my goals with this car for power. The SR I'm building, I want to run at four to 450 horsepower, but be capable of running to about 600 horsepower. The turbo and everything I have, which I haven't shown yet on the channel, you guys will see that in an upcoming video, but all the setup that I'm doing should be able to generate reliably 450 horsepower. So that's kind of the goal. And I think that'll be very respectable for this type of car and for, you know, the look of this car as well. I want the looks to match the aggressiveness of the car, the sounds it makes, the power it has. I want it all to match. I think that's a very important thing. I think when you have too aggressive looking of a car with a very slow engine, it's kind of underwhelming, at least to me. And so I would like to have the motor and the engine bay and everything match the exterior look of this car and uh, really put a nice cherry on top for this build because I think this car deserves it. This car is a really good car um, and it's been good to me and we've been on a long journey together but eventually this thing's going to get what it deserves, get a good motor in it, get a good transmission in it and then maybe we'll go rip it around. Maybe we will even throw some different wheels on it and maybe we'll give it a, a little bit of a slide. A little bit of a drift we'll see this won't be a dedicated drift car by any means these are getting a little bit too rare around here to be able to just drift it without in the back of my head being like if i crash this i'm gonna be so so sad so no this will not be a good dedicated drift car but you know maybe when we get some power in it we'll do a few skids for the channel take some people for some ride-alongs and stuff you know enjoy it i really want to take one of my biggest goals in life with this car once i get power and stuff like that is to be able to enjoy this car with my family and friends and uh and even strangers you know i want people to be able to enjoy this stuff because that's what it's all about it would bring me so much joy to be able to see my grandma and my grandpa and my mom and my dad you know react to this car and after seeing me work on it for countless hours in the garage and then be able to experience what it's like to be in a turbo car because they've never really experienced stuff like that and that's what really cars are all about you know obviously this car is mine I own it but I want people to be able to experience it and have it bring them joy as well as much joy as it's brought me you know that's what really the car community is about is it sharing experiences and you know teaching people and inspiring people that they can do the same type of stuff you know it, it is hard work but uh you can definitely do it so yeah that's just one goal i just want to talk about something i want to get off my chest because that is very important to me and I know that there are a lot of people out there that don't get this opportunity. And since I do have this opportunity, I'm not gonna let it slip away. I'm definitely gonna get this stuff done. It's a long road ahead, but I'm glad you guys are here to be able to witness it and be along for the ride and hopefully learn a little bit from me in the process. And the next thing I wanna touch on is the wheels and tires. So these are the same type of tires that I'm running on the Miata. Um, and if you guys obviously know there's a theme with the Miata and the 240, I did the same wheel and tire theme for both cars. So I did a very similar wheel and tire theme for both cars. So so these are Federal 595 RSs. In the rear, they are, let's see, 265, 35 uh, R18s in the rear. And then they're on Workmeister S1s with Project Kicks lugs. Same thing for the front, but with a different tire size. These are a staggered set. These are, these are 23540 R18s in the front. Um, and then the wheel specs, I will pop them up right now because I can't remember off the top of my head. But the only caveat with this wheel setup is I did have to run a small 10 millimeter spacer in the front. And that was because the back spacing on this wheel and tire setup, I did miscalculate just slightly. Literally like this much. So it does come in contact with these springs or it did before I added that. Now it has no issues. It does not touch the Swiss springs at all. It only touched them enough to put a little 
mark on the spring but it made a really weird noise when I first drove the car and I was like okay there's something wrong we need to figure it out figured out what it was and it was just adding a 10 millimeter spacer so just a heads up I would adjust those wheel specs slightly to push out the wheel just a little bit but this car goes to full lock fine it does not rub on anything the wheels and tires have been great I have no worries when I'm driving with them unlike the Miata this thing like I said can go full lock and uh, can drive to its full capability which is awesome that's everything you could want in doing a wide body car for everything to function almost the same as factory which is uh great so that is everything on my nissan 240sx i hope you guys enjoyed the video obviously we have a lot of stuff in the future to work on with this car such as the motor swap transmission swap i have a new differential for it exhaust all that stuff but thank you guys so much as promised i will put some exhaust clips in the end of this video and stay tuned for more videos on jimmy riggs